Hey students, Eric Maggotson here. Welcome to part two of 3.0 Hyper-V. So this is lecture two. We're gonna delve a little bit more into detail on creating and configuring virtual machine storage. So of course we have this virtual machine. We know it's a file. The operating system's loaded. Now we need a virtual hard disk, just like the physical disks in our machines, to store data, you know, to keep additional data separate from our operating system, you know, good practice, whatever the case may be. So let's take a look at how we do that. So of course, when we instantiate a virtual machine, we start by creating a virtual hard drive that the OS is going to be installed on. So keep that in mind. But we're going to talk about other storage solutions, such as, you know, using SAN as the storage for, um, uh, for virtual machines using SAN, we can use NAS, you know, we can use directly connected physical storage on a VM as well. So we'll take a look at that. So creating and configuring virtual machines. So Hyper-V uses a VHD file, um, you know, format to package part of the space on a physical disk to operate to the VM as though it is a physical disk. So what are we doing? We're, we're instantiating it in a file on the physical disk that's going to look to the virtual machine to be a hard drive, essentially. So instruct virtual storage subsystems to emulate almost any physical storage solution as we'll see. So, you know, it, it's important to know that we start out, you know, with, with these base controllers. So we got two IDE controllers. Uh, you know, one is a, is a system drive and the other is going to be a DVD drive. And then unpopulated is a SCSI controller so that, you know, we can connect to SCSI devices, um, again, physically, uh, if, if we'd like. So, you know, here working with virtual disks, you know, the hardware, etc. Let me go ahead and pause. I'll bring back up my virtual manager here real quick. So here is my Hyper-V on my local machine, similar to the one, you know, pretty much exact to the one that you'll run on a server. This is a DC001. We're looking at the hardware configuration here, okay? Here's our SCSI controller. We can see that we have one virtual processor um, that I'm initiating for this server. Um, you know, network adapter. Here's, um, yeah, SCSI controller, and then the IDE, the DVD drive. This is a generation two, by the way, so keep that in mind. So let me go ahead and close that. There we go. So you can see here, you know, here's that IDE controller, uh, the two IDE controllers, one for the hard drive, you know, server C as, as we would think it to be, you know, that's what they called the VHD when they configured this virtual machine. Here's the DVD drive again, you know, VM guest ISO. So they've got an ISO image in there and then the SCSI controller. Here's our network adapter and anything else that we might want within the virtual machine to connect out. So disk format. So a, virtual hard disk image, a fixed one, is an image file of a specified size. Now realize, because it's not having to resize all the time, keep in mind, if we call it 100 gigs, we've used 100 gigs of physical storage allocated to that machine, but it, because it doesn't have a resize like a dynamic, it's going to perform much faster. It has that dedicated size, and of course, we can always go in, you know, and resize that drive because it's a file. It's going to be very easy to do as long as we have the physical disk space to do it. Um, you know, moving a VHD to another uh, physical partition, very easy to do, or, or physical drive for that matter. Um, dynamic hard disk image, so an image file with a specified maximum size, but we only allocate and use file size, uh, file storage, when, um, when we need it. So consequently, this thing is dynamically growing all the time. It is going to affect performance. When we create snapshots, we're looking at differencing hard disks, and that's basically a, a parent-child relationship where the parent is whatever we define the parent to be at a point of time, and then any changes that we make are done on a child image. This way, we can go back to that initial snapshot um, without having to remove any functionality. Now we can also go at a point and say, okay, we have this differencing disk, but I want to commit the differences. So I'm practicing something, I'm trying something. For example, you might create a differencing disk um, as you install Active Directory and you go, okay, I've installed Active Directory, that worked, everything seems to work, I want to practice that again. 
you don't want to have to rebuild your whole virtual machine so you just wouldn't commit those changes um, using a differencing disk. So VHD um, standard on, don't hold me to this, I'm pretty sure generation one we create VHDs, gen two, VHDX, limited to two terabytes. Oh, oh kill me. Compatible with all versions of Hyper-V, uh, virtual server, and virtual PC. Some of you may remember back in the day when we had virtual PC. Um, like when you went to, I think it was Windows 7, you could actually get virtual PC for free and a Windows XP virtual PC that would run on your Windows 7. It was sort of a, hey, we realize you have old software that only runs on XP. Upgrade to 7 and run your old software on this XP virtual machine. So, okay, enough history. Let's move on. VHDX, 64 terabytes of storage in a single VHDX. That's just amazing. Support 4K logical sectors, uh, you know, larger block sizes if we want, you know, not backward compatible, you know, but if we know we've got huge files that we're storing on there, uh, we can make that highly efficient. So. It does allow you to create virtual hard disks as part of the virtual machine or create them later and add them to a virtual machine. So when we talk about Active Directory, we're going to actually go out and create a dedicated virtual hard disk, a second virtual hard disk, and we're going to do that after the fact um, to install our NTDS database files on, our Active Directory database files separate from the C partition that's running the OS. So that's a best practice. We're going to use it. So Hyper-V Manager provides access to most of the VHD parameters. Windows PowerShell provides most of the granular control so we can PowerShell this whole thing. This is what they're doing inside data center, folks, is they're automating writing PowerShell scripts that say, you know, go out and create this many virtual disks on these servers at this time. Execute, okay, it's done, next. You know, versus having to go through the, the GUI and do this all manually. So connect virtual hard disk page, create a virtual hard disk there, use an existing virtual hard disk, attach a virtual hard disk. So again, if we're moving servers, it's easy to do. Create a virtual hard disk, you know, is, what kind is it? Again, dynamic expanding, well, we're not gonna use as much, phys we're not gonna be allocating physical storage space that we're not utilizing, right? But we're gonna see a performance degradation. And then of course, differencing disk if we want. Um, cool how snapshots work. We'll, we'll look at that. So um, creates a, a new virtual disk. You know, you go through the process, give it a size. You know, what is it? It's dynamically expanding. You know, what's its, its, remember that this is not its startup size. This is its overall size. So if we hit that limit, we've got to go make some changes to it. Uh, if you choose to attach a virtual hard disk later option when creating your virtual machine, uh, you will need to attach a virtual hard disk to one of your controllers, for sure. Uh, makes perfect sense, you know, IDE, IDE1, you know, and the SCSI controller. So add a virtual hard disk, you know, pretty easy to do. We can go in through settings. We need to have the machine turned off. We can create one here. Uh, that's one way to do it. So keep that in mind. Pretty easy to then attach it at a later time. Differencing disk, so allows you to create a cloned version of a baseline installation. So, you know, that's really, really great uh, because we can then instantiate it again as a parent. So the parent disk is the baseline installation. The child is the differencing disk. Makes changes to the child differencing disk without changing the baseline. So we can utilize that baseline. In some cases, folks, we can actually instantiate virtual machines that are all running off of one baseline VHD not sure how this would work in production environment, and then have all the child disks be the changes that we make to each VM as they run. So kind of an interesting concept. You can revert back to the baseline installation at any time. You know, excellent tool for testing in labs. We love differencing disks when we're doing testing. So we just go in, you know, configure a disk and run it. So pass-through disk, um, a different type, uh, not as implemented as much, you know, definitely for a testing environment, type of virtual disk that points not to an area of space on the physical disk, but physical disk drive itself. So we can have that fifth or sixth disk drive in our server and instantiate that physical drive 
as the virtual hard disk. Okay, now you might say why we do this. Well, you know, in a SAN implementation, this is kind of what we're doing is passing through to use a segment of SAN physical disk storage for the virtual machine's disk storage. So hopefully that makes sense uh, as we go through this. So, you know, we go in configuring pass through disks in the disk manager tool. So edit a virtual hard disk, uh, whether you have attached it to a VM or not, you know, so we can modify these you know, their size, et cetera. Edit virtual hard disk wizard on the Hyper-V manager. So we can go in, we can come back, we can convert, we can expand and shrink. Again, so, you know, why instantiate a huge drive when you know you can go back and just add more space? Now the key of course is we have to have more physical drive space to expand that file, that file being, being a VHD. So we go through, you know, mount the virtual hard disk. We can go in and do that as well. By the way, we can use the disk management tool uh, to create a VHD as well. Let me just quickly, uh, I'm just gonna do this right on my base. So I'm gonna go disk management and I'll bring up, oh, helps if I could type, you guys aren't seeing that luckily. So let me bring up my disk management on my local machine and I'll drag it over. Here's disk management on my local machine. I can go to action, create a VHD, or attach a VHD. So if I already have a VHD, I can attach it. So let's just think about this, okay? Um, I build a new machine, I got all my data files on a VHD, no problem, just attach the VHD um, and associate it with your data files. So uh, I don't have to reinstall stuff if I don't want to. Cool thing about that is then suddenly I could use that VHD um, if I want to get crazy on like a solid state external drive and now I could use it in my Windows 7 instance all my data is there my Windows 8 my Windows 10 you know my Windows whatever's next um, you know in test environments you know not real efficient outside of that but you know definitely a way to move these things and, and move data quickly attach a virtual disk a checkpoint formerly called a snapshot is a captured image of the state, data, and hardware configuration of a virtual machine at a particular moment in time. So here's one thing that we can do. We can call up a virtual machine, go out to a site that we know is gonna get a virus for, from us. And uh, before we do that, we can create a checkpoint. We can instantiate the virus. It's my test machine. I don't wanna continue to have to rebuild it each time I go out and see what happens when I get ransomware or whatever. So I create that checkpoint, I install the uh, virus, I see what happens, and then I just go back to the checkpoint. Bye-bye virus. Uh, you know, of course, I'm doing this in a virtual machine. It should be very separate from my physical machine. I wouldn't even pass through the NIC, uh, the network information. I would give a dedicated NIC to the VM. It goes right out to the web, um, just so I don't affect my virtual machine from a security standpoint. So when we're practicing things like instantiating file servers, instantiating roles, well, create that base installation of server 2012 on a virtual machine, that becomes your checkpoint. Install, practice, practice. Once you get it, you know, you can um, either keep that checkpoint or you can delete it and then your machine is you know, right where it is so you don't have to necessarily go back. So we just go select, select the snapshot uh, you know, from an actions pane, system creates a snapshot file with a VH, uh, you know, an AVHD or AVHDS extension. What is it? It's just a copy of the file that was the virtual machine disk. So here's an example one, you know, we've got server A, here's a point in time that we took it, here's now, so we can always go back and delete the point in time. Remember that this is huge for file storage, folks. So create a bunch of these, you're, you're gonna need a lot of disk space. So. You know, quality of service, uh, common you know, for there to be more than one virtual hard disk hosted by a physical uh, hard disk. It's important for one virtual disk to monopolize the input output capacity causing. So help prevent this uh, enables you to control the quality of service for the given virtual hard disk. So if it's something that's not being written to a lot, um, you know, again, we can enable quality of service and give a min or max IOPS so that it is not utilizing um, all of our read write speeds you know for a machine that doesn't need it 
Okay, so keep that in mind, you know, server connected to a SAN, for example. Speaking of SANs, here we are. So storage area network, simply a network dedicated to high-speed connections between servers and storage devices. That it, that's it, you know, IP-based SAN today. You know, <laughs> SAN has a LUN, it has a segment of physical disk space. That's gonna be the physical disk space for my virtual machine. Boom, I can connect it to there. You know, fiber uh, channel today, pretty common there. So connecting to a SAN, so we have workstations, we have a server, we're gonna connect this server to a SAN array or storage attached network. This might be redundant attached, so this might be off-site uh, connected via fiber optic as a da disaster recovery. They could be in different locations, whatever the case may be. And this server connects to the SAN and thus the virtual machines on that server can have their dedicated disk space. So advantages to SAN avoids the limitations imposed by maximum number of devices. You can connect directly to a computer, you know, provide added flexibility in their communications capabilities. You can also greatly extend the distances between servers and storage devices. So disaster recovery, you know, we suddenly don't have to have, we have a single storage space, for example, or a couple storage spaces for all of our disk-based storage, okay? By the way, they're now building flash-based SANs. So remind me, we'll look at Pure Networks and what they're doing there. It's just astonishing what they're building in with flash or solid state as you know it, um, SAN networks. So clustering in a SAN, great way to do it. You know, server to storage. So servers access storage devices over the SAN just as if they were connected directly to the computer, you know, server to server, uh, and then storage to storage. So storage devices communicate among themselves without server innovation, you know, performing backups from one medium to another, to a mirror. So, you know, recovery, absolutely great. You know, this is what they're using inside data centers, you know, um, is that virtual and dynamic storage. And as we'll see, with the implementation of Server 2016, they've really made this an amazing concept of hybrid environments where we're running our Active Directory, for example, locally in our network to get that performance, to get that change management, to manage our security, but then we can go ahead and link that out to the cloud, um, you know, to manage a single unified uh, Active Directory infrastructure for all of our needs all of our users, security, et cetera. So clustering in a SAN, so here's the you know example. So these servers here would co connect most likely to a fiber channel switch via, uh, for example, fiber channel NICs, redundant, of course. We definitely want two. If we were gonna do full redundancy, we would have two fiber channel NICs in each server connecting to two independent um, fiber channel switches that were connected via fiber channel again out to the SAN. So high speed, fully redundant, you know, um, ability. This is what we're building in data centers. And we do see this, by the way, I've, I've built this for local companies as well, where, you know, data was so important and access to that data is so important that we needed that redundancy. Out at Columbia Aircraft, our plan was to actually extend our SAN across the, across the runway to give us disaster recovery across the one way with the idea that to the probability of two airplanes taking out our hangar across the runway and our main manufacturing plant at the same time is pretty limited. So we would have uh, fiber connected disaster recovery. What this meant, by the way, is that we could restore at that time gigabytes of data uh, within our large manufacturing databases within ERP, MRP, CRM systems uh, within minutes of a disaster. So something to keep in mind. Today, if I was building that, I would actually have the redundant servers, one across the airport one. So I could literally manage the business, all of the technology for the business from either location. So if we had a major disaster, uh, granted, we probably wouldn't be manufacturing planes the next day, but I'd have all the data ready to manufacture if we needed. Uh, so include, you know, RAID controllers with some JBOD, so just a bunch of disks, hot disk swapping, hot, you know, disk addition, etc. Fiber channel, that's what we were talking about. 
high-speed serial networking technology originally designed for use with supercomputers, but which is now associated primarily with SAN networking. So uh, I can show you an example of that in class. Connecting machines to a SAN, yep, essentially a pass-through uh, device that enables the virtual machine to access a physical fiber channel adapter installed in the computer and through that the external. So we could add many fiber channel adapters and I'm pretty sure dedicate one to a VM if we wanted to, but uh, you know, with our throughput being as high as it is, not really a necessity at, you know, at a, at a business grade level. So uh, virtual machines to a SAN, et cetera. Here's the lesson summary. You can pause, go through that. And that's it for lesson three. So we'll see, I mean, lesson two, we'll see you for lesson three. Take care.